Welcome back to the Crypto Trends Podcast, where we cover all things cryptocurrency, blockchain, Web 3.0, and AI. I'm Robert Croak, and I am joined by my co-host, Armando Pantoja. Both of us and our amazing team are excited to bring you the best information, guidance, and strategies each and every Wednesday. So follow along, and always remember to take notes and take action. Today is a very exciting time to be recording this episode. At the time of recording, Bitcoin is testing $50,000 and showing great strength after being knocked down to as low as $38,000 just a few weeks ago. So we're going to cover many important topics today, but we will begin with a market update so that all of you can be in the loop with what's going on. From there, we're going to talk about the structure of a crypto bull market and explain where the trillions of dollars that will enter this market will go in the coming months. From there, we will segue into one of the most important topics, which is how to manage your emotions in a bull market. To cap off this episode, we'll provide a Q&A panel where Armando and I will answer the best questions we have been asked over and over again since the launch of this podcast. So Armando, let's get right into it. What do you make of Bitcoin reaching $50,000 for the first time since December of 2021? It's 50,000, you know, uh, this is the first time in two years that Bitcoin has passed 50,000. This is exactly what me and you have been talking about over the last few months. Uh, we saw some rejection, a lot of rejection at 49 after the ETF approval. Uh, and it went down to 38,000. It reached the support level there. And now we're back to 49 and now to 50,000. Exactly as we played out. People said we were crazy. They said we didn't know what we were talking about. But you know what this shows me, Robert? Do tell. I'd love to hear it. It shows me strength. I remember in our first episode, people said we were crazy. They said Bitcoin would go all the way down to 32. It, would all, it, was, it was over for Bitcoin, but people panicked, got out of the market, sold everything they had, but now we're back to 50,000. Yeah, it was nuts. How many people told me that they sold their Bitcoin and even Ethereum during this recent pullback? And it was just blew my mind of how many people did this, even though we warned them it was going to happen. We gave them all the information so they'd have the playbook. And yet so many of them panicked and sold anyway. If they had listened truly to what we were saying, they would have realized that 38,000 was an incredible buying opportunity and they should have gotten in right then. I couldn't agree more, Armando. This is very important lesson to point out, though. Being that Bitcoin is the hardest form of money ever created, we have to be ready for Bitcoin to have these corrections so that when they happen, we can snatch up more. If you had bought Bitcoin like us during that correction to 38,000, then your investment from that day would already be up 30%. The key lesson here is if you miss that opportunity is that we can't fear corrections in bull markets and we need to be prepared for them so we can navigate them strategically. Armando, can you shed some light on how you were able to navigate the correction back to 38,000 strategically so that we could benefit from that move that's currently happening? That's a great question, Robert. And most people that follow me on social media, they know that I've been buying Bitcoin for over 10 years now. And people ask me what I buy at these prices. The question is yes, because Bitcoin still has a lot of room to grow. The truth is that even though I was in early over 10 years ago, we're still very early in the technology that Bitcoin is. Most technology takes 20 to 30 years for true adoption and integration into society. So we're still very early in this investment. I'm a firm believer that Bitcoin will be well over $1 million here soon. It's an easy, easy buy for me, even at a pullback of 38000 to illustrate that point, I did some quick math for our listeners. If you bought Bitcoin at 38000 during the pullback, and let's say it goes to $1 million, that's still a 26.5x, 2650% return, yet so many people shout from the mountaintops that it's too late for Bitcoin and that you should buy all these little meme coins and small cap coins, which we believe they should do as well. But so many people think Bitcoin is no longer a top entity and shouldn't be purchased at these prices. And it's just crazy when you look at the macro levels of where we believe Bitcoin will go. If you look long term, when Bitcoin's well past a million dollars, it's not going to matter if you bought it at 30, 40 or 50. It's, it's still an incredible return. 
And to answer your question, Robert, this is exactly how I went about it. Now, when Bitcoin, the Bitcoin ETF decision was about to be released, I knew there was a strong possibility of a buy on the rumor selling the news event. These events happen all the time in crypto and the stock market. Remember back, at, remember, do you remember back with the uh, Coinbase IPO? Of course I do. Once I understood this concept, I went to our analysts here at Crypto Trends and I asked them what, what do the technicals look like, right? So our analysts told us if Bitcoin broke 42 at the time, it was very likely that we we're going to head back to 38. And there was even a slight possibility of a retraction all the way back down to 32. So our analysts at that time gave us a 50-50 chance that Bitcoin was going to drop down to that level. So what I did is I set alerts at 40. 39 and 38. So when Bitcoin eventually did drop to those levels, I allocated a lot of money towards making buys at those levels. That's a great way to put it, Armando. I think the key theme on what you just said is the importance of preparation and being unbiased so that you can execute objectively, even if the price is moving in the opposite directions of your HODL positions. We'll get into this more later in the podcast, but I'm really glad that you brought this up. Absolutely. So let me, let me ask you a question, Robert. What are you looking at right now? Like you said, we were able to get in at 38,000 when it dropped. We thought it could go down to 30,000, but it just didn't. And just as we told our audience in previous episodes, now that Bitcoin has recovered and is making new local highs, we have to refocus our energy to the next logical level that Bitcoin could be working to. So after taking out the $49,000 resistance, Bitcoin's next resistance is at about 52,000, which dates back to December of 2021. I know people might be wondering, why doesn't Robert think it's gonna go straight to all time highs right now? And my answer is simply because Bitcoin has never broken all time highs prior to the halving. The halving is still some time away and we don't wanna to get too bullish too fast. We've said this over and over again. We're not saying that there can't be a first time scenario where Bitcoin tests highs prior to the halving, but we are saying that we can find this scenario to be less likely. That's why we keep looking for short term resistances. Rather than letting our emotions dictate what we think is going to happen next, we take a more objective and technical approach. So in short, I'm looking to see how Bitcoin trades at these new levels over the next couple days or week so that we can evaluate what's likely to come from that for everyone following along. And I think our only consideration right now is altcoins, right? So usually after Bitcoin makes a big move like this, we move into what's called alt altcoin season. So with altcoin season, you have to, to understand how altcoin season works, you have to understand how the overall crypto market works in general. So this gives us a good segue into how money moves into the crypto market. I want to know your thoughts on that, Robert. That's a good lead in to section number three, how money moves in bull markets. First of all, let's talk about six months prior to the halving since we find ourselves about two months away right now. In this time, price historically has never made new all-time highs, like we said before. Instead, it's building a foundation for a move back to all-time highs, which normally begins a few months after the halving starts. It's important to note that we usually see corrections around the halving. In 2020, we saw the COVID crash, which was likely more dramatic than any move we'd see this time around due to the nature of what caused that crash. In 2016, however, we saw a price rise before and into the halving and then have a correction shortly after the halving of about 30%. And I remember that one vividly because I was pissed at the moon that I didn't see it coming and no one did. So it was very difficult to get a handle on what to do during the 2016 sell-off that happened. Uh, but I think it's gonna be different this time. I believe that if we were to see a correction prior to or around the halving, that it would likely be smaller and quicker than the one that we saw in 2016, barring any black swan event. So Armando, what are your thoughts on this matter and walk our listeners through? I mean, at this point, if I saw a, a quick retraction like you're talking about now, it'd be a great buying opportunity to get in because I don't think we're gonna see Bitcoin at these levels going into the future, not, not for very long. So I think it's, be, it would be a great buying opportunity. And don't you agree anything moving forward will be very similar to what we saw in the last few weeks. 
Again, I want to reiterate, so many people came to me and said, I sold off my Ethereum. I sold off my Bitcoin. I didn't know what to do. And my first reaction is always, text me, DM me, send a carrier pigeon, because at the end of the day, this is a buying opportunity. It goes back to, I think, Warren Buffett's famous quote, when there's blood in the streets, it's a buying opportunity, even if it's your own. And so many people just panic so quickly and they stop zooming out. You hear me say all the time, when in doubt, zoom out. Please remember that every time there's a correction, because so many people forget when you sell off, you might miss the time in getting back in. It's a taxable event. So that hurts your profits right. as well. There's much more that goes into this from a macro level. And everyone needs to understand that further. And that's why we preach this. And that's why the Crypto Trends podcast exists for all of you. So from there, let's talk about what happens when money starts to flood into Bitcoin. Demand significantly increases and supply starts to decrease rapidly from the halving. This is usually the catalyst that causes Bitcoin to skyrocket. Not only does Bitcoin skyrocket, but its market dominance rises since the funds are flooding into Bitcoin more than altcoins in the initial post halving phase of the bull market. So, Robert, can you tell us what historically happens right before a halving when a, normally a correction happens? Yeah, from there, we see a lot of money start to flood into Bitcoin. Demand significantly increases and supply starts to decrease rapidly because of the halving. This is usually the catalyst that causes Bitcoin to skyrocket. Not only does Bitcoin skyrocket, but its market dominance rises since the funds are flooding into Bitcoin in the initial post-halving phase of the bull market. Because of this, Bitcoin starts marching towards all-time highs while doing so, and it significantly outperforms the majority of altcoins in its initial run-up and through all-time highs. Eventually, Bitcoin breaks all-time highs and heads into what we call price discovery. Armando, can you explain to our audience what price discovery means and give a little bit of a breakdown? Well, Whenever a stock or a crypto starts to reach all-time highs, we really don't know what the true value of that asset is. So what happens is the market tries to figure out what the true value of a crypto or stock is at that time. We'll start to see the market search for resistance and support levels because no one knows for sure what the price is supposed to be because we're in uncharted territories. The biggest mistake that most people make is that they feel like these coins, crypto, stocks, whatever, are gonna keep going up forever. That rarely happens, right? Is that there's normally a correction. Then people panic and sell everything they have. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's the old adage, they buy high and sell low. Exactly. And no matter how much we talk about it, they just don't follow this theory. And I know 25 years ago, I did it all the time. I thought I could time the market. I made those mistakes. And that's why people crack up when they ask me a price of a, of a crypto or a stock or even an ETF, and I'll be like, I don't know. I don't look at it every day. I don't have to look at it every day. So yeah, anyway, keep going. Sorry to interrupt. That's exactly what I say too, is that I don't look at it every day. And I don't even want people telling me what the price is because I don't want that information to cause emotional response in me. And that's what happens to people, right? Is they get emotionally, they have an emotional response to the price. They sell everything they have and they end up losing money. So when it's going up, people get very excited about the price going up. That euphoria overwhelms them. And then when it drops, they panic and sell everything. But remember, corrections happen. That's how it is. Nothing goes straight up forever. There's corrections. There's impulses and corrections along the way on the path to where these assets are going to go. So in every single bull market I've seen, there's been two to three corrections. In every one of those retractions or corrections, there's a 30 to 40% drop. And sometimes in altcoins, it's even more. In most cases, it's more with altcoins. The correlation is normally exaggerated. So to explain it, this why, explain it to the audience why this happens. Yeah, this is completely normal. And even healthy in bull markets, let's use Bitcoin as an example. When Bitcoin breaks its all-time high and starts surging to new highs, institution and big investors start thinking about taking their first round of profits. Eventually they do, and that causes the market to correct 30 to 40%, sometimes even more. And eventually retail investors get to buy up these institutional sales, which causes the bull market to continue. So again, when in doubt, zoom out, 
Don't have a knee jerk reaction and stay true to the course and understand why you're investing into these Bitcoin and Ethereum's and into these markets overall. Have a thesis and stick to it. Yeah, and and you have to remember, I'm a big believer that uh, the rich, the elite, and the wealthy will try to. I don't want to say manipulate, but they will try to control the market. So what? And they don't take. They try not to take losses, right? So when they get a strong profit, what they do is they sell. That causes the market to retract. They take those profits, cycle them into altcoins, and wait for that altcoin season to start. When they're always ahead of what the general population is. And then people always ask me, what are they trying to do? Well, they're cycling their profits into more profitable coins. They're cycling their Bitcoin profits into altcoins where they can make even more profit in a, re in a retraction that they created. So the retail investors start buying up the coins that the wealthy are, are you know, selling off. And one important key to watch is the Bitcoin dominance. As Bitcoin dominance starts to drop, and what Bitcoin dominance is for people who don't know is that how much of the entire crypto market is, of the entire crypto market cap is controlled by Bitcoin. So when that dominance starts to drop, that's a sign that the wealthy are starting to funnel their money into altcoins. So essentially, you're saying that the best time to buy altcoins once the bull market begins is during the first major correction following price discovery. So that makes sense because this, again, illustrates why people need to understand these market conditions so they don't have knee-jerk reactions. So, so important. Yeah, uh, so whenever you have gaps of knowledge in your head or gaps of understanding, you know what you fill those with? Emotion. So you make emotional responses to changes in the market. This is why we see people over allocating the altcoins when Bitcoin dominance is rising and then over allocating the Bitcoin when altcoin dominance is rising. This is why it's so important for our viewers to take notes on what we're saying right now, because we want to ensure that they understand how to cycle their money just as the so-called smart money is doing. So to ensure that they are staying ahead of the trend, which is so important in bull markets. So that leads us to section four, managing your success by managing your emotions. And I think this is one of the most important parts of this episode for everyone to understand. You have to control your emotions, go off of the facts, the knowledge, and the things that you learn to make educated decisions. And I think this is a perfect segue into our next talking point, is that you have to stay ahead of the trends. And the way you do that is you have to remove emotion from the equation. So many times I've seen people make incredible amounts of money in a bull market and lose it all. <laughs> yeah, the, the Dogecoin guy? Exactly, because they're unable to manage their emotions and they don't know when to get out and they end up losing everything. Yeah, he, he became famous for his amazing, amazing bet on Dogecoin. His timing was perfect. And then he forgot one thing take money off the top. Exactly. He thought Dogecoin was just going to keep going and going and going, hence this episode. And he was wrong. And he could have taken 2 million of that 3 million in profit off the top and been set for life. He could have put that money into index funds and exactly. had a nice life. But instead, he tried to ride it too hard and let the, the little bit of fame get to him. And, uh, and it was a mistake. And I congrats him for being able to run it up and have diamond hands. But next time, take some off the top. And, I, you know, I've heard that story a lot, uh, a lot of times. I mean, he was the most famous one, but I've heard it so many times. And I want to tell people this, too, is that you hear a lot of stories about people making a lot of money in crypto, Dogecoin, whatever, whatever they're making money in, even stocks. And they'll tell you, look, I made $200,000 over the weekend. Then they'll lose it, but you'll never hear that story. Well, it's the same thing. It's the same thing when you go to a casino. Exactly. The number one sentence you hear walking through a casino is, I was up. Yeah. It's so hilarious. I promise you, if the casinos let us hear all of the vocals through all of their cameras, it would be, I was up 1,800. I was up 67. Was is the operative word here. Same thing in crypto. And that's why we're trying to teach everyone, and I will stay on this hill for as long as everyone will listen. Get your basics covered with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, some of some of the blue chip, been around for a, for a while, big dogs on the block, then go into some of the mid cap coins, then some of the altcoins, and then you can play around with some meme coins. And if you're going to go all in on a meme coin, you just better be right because most of them are going to go to zero and you don't want to be the Dogecoin guy that once had it and now doesn't. It's just a bad strategy. It's a horrible feeling to go through your life 
And I, people, it amazes me how bad this bad people make, how how bad of decisions people make. For I know I've known I've known people who make fifty thousand a year. They go up on a coin two hundred and fifty thousand five year salary, and they'll mess it all up and lose everything. That money could have changed their life completely. Well, it just comes back to mindset. If you think about all the NFL, NBA players, musicians out there that have never touched a million dollars, they sign a huge contract for $30 million, $50 million, and then they all of a sudden go out and buy everyone in their family a Mercedes, they buy three houses, they take care of 12 of their boys, and that's a mistake. And that is a problem throughout society is when people become rich quick, they don't know how to handle it. That's why most lottery winder, winners end up broke and bankrupt. It's because people don't know what to do with it when they get it. So I hope that everything we share in the Crypto Trends podcast helps at least a few people, maybe a million people over the years to understand when you win that money, when you have a big gain, take some off the top, put it in safer investments and move on to make sure that you are leveraged across multiple platforms and you're diversified so you don't get in that situation of having a huge run up and then going broke. So I just like to, to your point, it's easier to make the money that, than it is to keep it. So what, is, what are some things that you've done over the years to manage those emotions and go about your business effectively? So for me, it's pretty simple. I like to track where I am for my dollar cost averaging, and I want to understand my long-term investment thesis. We talk about this all the time. Before you buy anything, I don't care if it's a stock, precious metal, a crypto, any investment you do, you need to have a thesis before that money leaves your bank account. Because if you don't know why you're doing it and what the upside you're looking for is, you're going to make mistakes along the way. So for me, and this is something I learned 20 years ago, never invest with emotion and always have a strategy before buying. For instance, if I'm entering a position, I already know what my desired outcome is, and so should you. And so, for example, if you're going to buy $1,000 worth of Bitcoin and you want to achieve a 50% return, say, whatever it is, once you achieve that, you should take some off the top and continue for there and always have a plan. I call it playing with the house's money. You know, my dollar cost average of Bitcoin right now, I think is somewhere around the $400 range throughout the years of owning Bitcoin. So I've been playing with the house's money for years and years. So for me, it's easy to understand my my thesis. And I think it's just very important for all of you listening and following along to make sure you have a plan. I don't care if it's in your phone in a note. I don't care if it's in a spreadsheet. Just make sure you have a plan because it's so, so important to understand where you're taking profits. When are you exiting a trade? All of those things are so, so important. So now we'd like to wrap up this episode by answering questions that we've been getting from you, our amazing audience. And be sure to follow us on all platforms. And as always, feel free to send us your questions. We love it. We can bring it up in an episode, call it out. And we really enjoy engaging with our audience as we grow the Crypto Trends community. So the first question, and I'm going to read this here, was I was wondering if in the future you will have an episode based on an exit strategy during a bull market. I'm new to crypto and I'm getting mixed reviews on how to exit. This is a great question, and I'm very glad people have been asking it. The answer to that question is absolutely. Having profit-taking strategies set in place could be the difference between making a lot of money and, as we just spoke, getting wrecked. Now that we're pre-having right now, though, we've been more focused on positioning for the bull market, and this is the most logical way to approach the market right now. By focusing on positioning our portfolios early, we will be able to get ourselves in positions of strength for the bull market. In other words, we don't want to focus on taking profits before we're fully in our positions. It's too premature. But to confirm the answer to your question, we'll absolutely have episodes dedicated to this because it's very important for everyone, as we've spoke of, to understand when to take profits and when to exit positions. Question number two from our listeners. Will it be too late to invest in the bull market after the halving? So... That's a great question. A lot of people are just starting to understand what the having is and just starting to realize that a bull market is on its way. So a lot of people are asking if there's time to prepare. I think a lot of people are in this position. 
I think a lot of people are in this position, but we have to remember that having is set right now for April 18th, which you still got two months, you know, we got about two months from today uh, for, before the having takes place. But, but even after the having, I think there's still a great opportunity to invest because traditionally or historically, we've always seen a slight correction after the having when minor capitalization starts to happen, people start thinking that the having may not have any effect, the media starts pushing the narrative that the having no longer has the same effect that it has in the past, which has happened every single book, Bitcoin bull run I've seen since I've been involved in this market. Like I said earlier, that there's a great, great potential for a drop right around the halving, which creates a buying opportunity for Bitcoin and even altcoins. Historically, right after that halving, when Bitcoin doesn't respond positively, the media is gonna say the Bitcoin halving didn't work. You know, but there's always a delayed effect. So even if we're wrong and there's no correction uh, before or after the halving, there's gonna be a correction along the path to where we think Bitcoin is going. So any correction is a great buying opportunity, but waiting for those corrections that happen normally for the unsavvy investor is very, very stressful because they let their emotions get involved that FOMO take over and they're so afraid they're going to miss the boat <laughs> that they get, a, get into an emotional frenzy and end up buying at the wrong times. You know how many times a week people reach out to me and they think they can time the market? You have the biggest hedge funds, the biggest investment groups, the smartest people, people with quant computing, all of the tools in the world. I don't even know all of them because there's so many new ones every single month. And somehow this random individual that just read, read a book about stocks or crypto thinks they can time the market. And that's why, again, we just have to keep beating the drum that you can't time the market and it's all about time in the market. And that's the most important takeaway. The only thing we look for is profit. Right. So you can't sell at the top, buy at the bottom. That's impossible. But I will tell you this is that along the way, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for investment in this crypto bull run. And that leads us into question number three. Would it make more sense to invest in altcoins than Bitcoin since they can have bigger returns? This is a very good question. I think a lot of it comes down to the individual person's risk tolerance. I recommend that everyone have Bitcoin in their portfolio. However, the percentage they choose to allocate is entirely up to each individual. There is no one size fits all here. So many people think that there is a, a blueprint that exactly can spell it out, and there just isn't. And so for this question, I believe that altcoins definitely have more potential for greater returns, but also require more attention and management. So if you're not going to be engaged with your portfolio, then you run the risk of missing the opportunity to sell when the time comes. And that's where altcoins can be super risky because when they sell off, they sell off hard and fast. And this is how people get wrecked. Thus, I think a mix of Bitcoin and Ethereum in any portfolio is important, but it's completely okay to allocate a larger percentage of your portfolio to altcoins if you know you're going to be able to keep up with it. Keep your eye on the prize. Very important and great question. Okay, Armando. Question number four, what was the lesson you had to learn the hard way in crypto? Let's hear it. Uh, there's no easy way to high returns in cryptocurrency. You have to learn, you have to do it yourself, or you have to uh, put effort into it, right? Is that the first time back in 2011, I was in grad school uh, studying cryptology. That's how I got into crypto early. Uh, and I bought some Bitcoin and it was difficult to buy it back then. Uh, so I bought the Bitcoin and I didn't know what to do with it, right? So I go on a form and I'm in this form trying to figure out wh what am I going to do with this thing I just bought? And a guy approaches me on a form and he says, hey, if you send me that Bitcoin, I have a, a, a Bitcoin uh, tumbler or something he called it and I can triple it to you in 24 hours. I sent it to him. <laughs> you fell for that shit back then? It's 2011. And yeah. it's still happening today and people yeah. don't do that. <laughs> don't send your keys or your yeah. Bitcoin to anyone. But uh, so I sent it, of course, he stole it. Right. So but it did teach me an important lesson that that there's no easy way to make profit in Bitcoin. You have to learn how to do it. Nobody's going to take the money from you and invest it and give you back that much of a profit. They would just do it themselves. So that led me on the path to where I am today. So it taught me that one, that if somebody went through that much trouble to steal my Bitcoin, it had value. So I started, and then two, it, I, I understood how the blockchain worked. There's no way to create new Bitcoin. 
uh, with a with a, a specialized program. So it, it, actually, that was one of the best things that happened to me. It was a tough lesson, but it was the best thing that happened because it led me on the path that I am today. Made millions in Bitcoin, and I'm here talking uh, on a Crypto Trends podcast. So it it changed my life completely, but it was one of the toughest lessons I had to learn. Yeah, I don't have any crazy lessons of loss. I think the only crazy lessons I have in Bitcoin is, and in crypto in general, is it's really difficult not to look in the rear view mirror. Every time someone bemoans their bad luck for getting out too early, I even had a guy stop me on the street yesterday and ask me when I was selling Bitcoin next. And I was like, I don't know, probably a few years down the road. And he said, well, when's the last time you sold any Bitcoin? And I said, back in uh, 2016 or 2017 when it was at the top. And so for me, it's really difficult because I remember selling my first 100 Bitcoin, I think it was $740 a piece, and I thought I was a genius. I bought them and my dollar cost average at that time was like $45, so selling them at $700 was an incredible return. And then when you look back in that rear view mirror, you know, you just want to go walk off a short cliff, you know. And so for me, I haven't had any situations of being ripped off. It's just understanding the ROI. And I had a plan. My plan was get to a certain point or a dollar amount or a percentage of return and sell some off. So over the years, I've sold off hundreds of Bitcoin at various price points. And you know, it's easy to look in the rear view mirror and say, man, I wish I had all them back. But you can't do that. It's all about making a great return and sticking to the plan. And so right now, you know, you and I both think in the next five to seven years, we could see a million dollar Bitcoin. So the thought of taking money off the top for me isn't there. It just isn't. My thought is always accumulation until we get to a point where we believe we might be at the top and then start looking at that. That could be at 250,000, it could be at 500,000, it could be at a million. Whatever your thesis is, I think it's really important to stick to it. So great episode, and I wanna thank each and every one of you for listening and following along. You can find us on Instagram, at Crypto Trends Podcast, and on Spotify, Apple, and YouTube. We are so excited for 2024 and beyond and sharing all of our crypto insights with all of you. If you love the podcast, please share with a friend, give us a five-star review, and we'll see you next week.